Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Play the Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. I don't know what I was about to say there. Uh, last time we continued exploring the, the market square and we got to this point here. So we explored all this, found a troop of actors here, found a creepy demon turn people to ghouls and found evidence of a necromancer. And we lost a lot of strength. We have strength damage on both Sila and Barad. Quite a lot of it, too. Um, actually, Barad is looking fine. It's his intelligence and his wisdom. That got destroyed by corruption. I see. So did... S ah. I thought... Okay. Good. Our strength is cured. So we don't have to worry about that right now. Until we run into more shadows, which... Did a number on us in that last battle. Godspeed. Right now, let's just uh, keep moving forward. Gotta find some more survivors. Before we go back to the Defender's Heart. Hello. The city has fallen at last. How glorious. Now I can stop pretending to be a shopkeeper and spend all my time on my true passion. Reanimating the dead. Okay, we found the Necromancer. And we have, who are those guys? Cultists? That's not good. And the necromancer's name is Colt, Cultist Necromancer. All right, this could be a bit tough. And by a bit tough, I mean very tough. Sila, you go, I forgot you could heal. This is a swift action, right? Go ahead and heal first. Probably should have healed before we left the camp, but whatever. Alright, Sila, you're going... When does Barrett go, actually? Barrett goes towards the end. So, actually, I don't think we want to send you in yet. And instead, we don't have any blessed spells, right? I think we used them all. We do have Divine Favor, however, which we're going to use... On myself because I forgot that it's a personal spell but it was pointed out to me in the comment section that that gives a bonus to your uh, attack roll based on your level so that's good and what did he just do he cast haste on the zombies that's not good all right can you hit the necromancer go ahead and try and hit the necromancer Thirteen damage to him, nine damage to him, then miss. How much damage did that do overall to him? Okay, so this guy's got quite a bit of health. I accidentally skipped Wolf's turn. All right, they're all using divine favor. Zombies getting kind of close there. Uh, we're going to use. Summon monster. Right there. Okay, we got a dog summoned. Uh, Camellia. Hmm. We're going to cast bull strength on Lan. I feel like Lan's gonna be needed a lot in this in this fight. Barret, I'm gonna be counting on you to just defend. There's a good strike right there. Alright, now he's got Shield of Faith. That's not good. Sila, lay on hands again. And you come up here and attack him. Good. Barrett's I succeeded on my fortitude saving throw against his blindness. Good. Lan, you should be doing more damage now because of your strength, right? I can't tell. Plus nine, yeah. He's definitely got a bonus to that. 14 damage. Miss. 
Okay, he missed twice. That's not good. It could be worse, but that's not good. Take out that zombie. You missed. Damn it, Wolf, 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 Jed, Wolf, Wolf, Jeff. Wolf, yeah, that's your name. All right, the cultists are getting closer. Ember, go ahead and any other scrolls? Corrosive touch, enlarged person. I don't know if that uh, cancels out the summon we have. I think it probably does. Why don't you go ahead? Cast Ray of Sickness on this guy. Damn it. All right, we got the dog. Oh, he attacks on his own. And he's going after him. Okay. I think we're gonna go ahead and use Bane right now. I know we're not gonna hit those three up there, but use Bane. Damn it. They succeeded their will saves. There we go, get their attention. Oh no, my my summons. Good. Alright, used scare. So obviously Lan got scared. Damn it, Lan. Wool just got scared. Camellia got scared. And Barrett got scared. That's not good. How long does this last for? Uh, scare. Yep, cast scare. All targeted living creatures of less than six hit dice become frightened. If a creature succeeds on a will saving save, it is instead shaken for one round. Creatures are, uh, one round per level? Okay. How many levels does he have? Probably too many. Six rounds. That's insane. Okay. We... I think we're going to use another summon here. I think we need the... The extra... Extra people. The good news about this is they're running away from the fight. And I know there's nobody back there that's going to hurt them. So it could be worse. Ah, Baird's defense is amazing. Losing him on the front line is going to be rough. Ow. It's not a good start. Okay, she missed. He's... What's he casting? Bone Shaker. And she even succeeded on the throw. Okay, Lan, you're still afraid, right? A frightened creature may start to flee. Alright, well, I need you to hit somebody. Can you hit anybody? Doesn't look like it. We don't have any remove fear things, do we?
I think we might actually have a remove fear. We have cause fear. Remove fear. But we're not feared, we're frightened. We're gonna try it. We need to have it on Barrett. Or land. But land just went. We can't get to Barrett in time, it doesn't look like. Oh, it's a AoE. Damn it, Wolgif. Maybe I can give it to Camellia. Alright, she's down. Luckily, they didn't go for Ember here. Um, I need to get her away. Unfortunately, she's now in a spot where that guy can attack her. Damn, his range is insane. Uh, we're gonna have to take the hit. She needs to get out of there. Yeah, it was too dangerous for her up there. All right, Mr. Wolf or dog. And now that that guy's there, Kameli is too afraid to use the spell, so she's gonna run. Luckily, Barrett is not going to take an attack of opportunity this time. Not that that matters, really. Alright, they're going for Barrett. That's good. He casts Shield. Hopefully, Haste is running out of, running out of juice. That sucks. What an epic fight this is turning out to be. Alright, Ember. Big damage. Not the biggest of damages, but damage. This is going to be tough. Unless they attack Ember, we're, we're just going to be running for the next few turns. And Ember's probably going to die. Hold on, just a little more. Shit. Yeah, they're going for him. Alright, Ember is dead. 24 damage. Jesus. That's a permanent death for her. Man, this this spell is tough <laughs> to deal with here. I mean, at this point, even if we uh, bear it's down. Yeah, even if we make it to the end of the the fear stuff, we're not going to have enough to really do anything. And apparently, she's used all of her spirit weapon up. So, I'm assuming we're probably going to have to redo this fight. In which case, we're going to need to discover a way to... Stop the fear. Can you attack? Go ahead and do it. This. Come on, man. There you go. Uh, 
Alright. Everyone's too far away for that to work. Move closer. Where are you going? Oh, he got feared. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, okay, that guy's taking some damage. They're running out of haste. That's actually really good for us. A part of me doesn't want to succeed on this fight because we have two permanently dead people. And I think we only have one Tarendalev scale left. So we'll have to choose between them as to who we should uh, bring back. Hello, Necromancer. All right, Baron, you are running into a, a dead end, it looks like, my friend. Okay, we'll just... Looks like they're just going to continue going out to Camellia here. I do think I, because Lan ran past that guy... Nope, he's going to get an attack of opportunity on her. Never mind. I thought she'd be safe from from those. Alright, there's another down. So, Wuljif and Lan have to take out five enemies. I don't suspect that's going to work because I think Wuljif is trapped. Or Lan is trapped right here. He certainly is. Although, the fear has run out. Although, it looks like he's trying to cast it again. Good job, Lan. Wolgif. You need to take out the the big guy. Go ahead, cast Grease. Right, he's calling Occultist back, but he's proned right now. Grease is actually a really good spell. We should use that if we uh, don't manage to pull this off, which I don't think we are. You go, Lan. Could have really used you before. I was hoping that would set, set it ablaze or something. But alas, it was not to be. Run, Wolgif. What? Run. Run. It's like one of those horror movies where the uh, the bad guy's just walking towards you. Okay, Lan. It's point blank range. Won't survive me. Good. And Wolgif. Uh, he saved. His will save. Uh, you will be attacked if you run. So you're just going to stay there. Try and take the hit. Good. We may actually pull this off, Lan. It's kicking ass over there. And if Wolgif can kill, or at least put some damage on these guys, Necromancer can't get up. This. Come on, Lan. Damn it, Lan. Cover me, all right. Can't you just die already? Critical hit. Yeah, it's all your fault. Hey, you know, that was a, a decent land, or at least decent hit at the end there for him. Those guys are going to take time to get the land. If Lan can finish this guy off. Damn it, the Necromancer's up. He just cast Scare on a... 
the hell is that guy's problem? Good. I think we're actually going to pull this off. I think land's going to come through for us. We're going to have <laughs> a lot of injuries, but... But we're going to do it. Oh, he's about to cast Magic Missile at me. Or he's going to try to. The subject ignores the adverse movement effects of difficult terrain. You've crossed the wrong line. Critical hit on the Necromancer. Lan. 38 damage to him. Lan the MVP. He's going to do it. The zombie's going to take way too long to get to, here, to him. He's going to be able to kite both of these guys. The only guy I was really nervous about was the Necromancer, and he's dead. Land killed the, la the other one, just a zombie left. He's gonna pull it off. I can't believe it. I kind of wish he didn't pull it off, because <laughs> we could have probably done that fight a lot better, but. Land did it, killed the zombie. All right, everybody group up. Let's see what we uh, what we can do here. Uh, so the cultists had a couple scrolls, Owl's Wisdom, some small water elementals, an air elemental, serious wounds, bears endurance. Where's the necromancer at? This is the necromancer, right? Yeah. Necromancer had a glaive, an unidentified glaive, which was identified to be the Dark Horn. A glaive popular among Baphomet, uh, Baphomet's warriors. Touching the handle is enough to sense the latent, latent evil within this weapon. Interesting. None of us use glaives, so it's not a big deal. Scroll of Blur. Okay, everybody group up. And let's see what we can do here for our friends. Uh, Ember should be around here, right? Where'd Ember die at? Is this her right here on the ground? I do believe we only have one scale left of Terendalev. Yes. So Ember or Sila? Sila's probably more important, huh? But Sila's or Ember's just a child. Can't just leave her dead. It's not fair. Okay. Well, we're going to be going back to the Defender's Heart now to revive. I guess we should just go back and try and revive both of them. But let us first check out this the disfigured corpses are laid out in a neat pattern in preparation for an unknown ritual anything in the back here looks like there is another path over here this just leads to the chasm all right that is the end of this area though i mean we got to go over here but uh, we're almost done with this place before I use the uh, the scale, we are going to return to the Defender's Heart and see if I can't revive them that way. I kind of forget how resurrection works. And I probably skipped through the tutorial because I was like, oh, I know everything about this game. I'm amazing. When I don't. So we're going to exit the area here. Um, there's a lot of loot we could take. I don't know what we should take, but I guess we should start taking the armor until we are at 732. Wait, is what I'm gonna do. This armor tends to be more expensive than weapons, I think. Might just be talking out of my ass, but I felt like that was the case, unless they were masterwork weapons. All right, that's good enough. go back to the defender's heart and hopefully we can find a way to revive our fallen companions there
take one hour. Hopefully we don't run into anybody. Damn it. <laughs> I thought about random encounters the moment I clicked yes to go to the uh, place. But maybe this is just a merchant. No, I don't think it will be. Okay. I need some heals. Alright, Barrett is healed. Got loot over here to take. Can't hide from me. And loot there to take. Silver medallion, golden earring. Anything else back here? Oh, more loot. Ooh. Potion of inflict moderate wounds and a cure light wounds potion. That's good. And two perception checks failed. I'm guessing there was more loot to be had. The Neo? Who's this? What's going on here? Wearing a robe? Check. Baphomet symbol around the neck? Check. Crazy eyes? Check. Note to self. Bring a mirror next time to be able to adjust the optimal level of eye craziness. Everything is ready for the experiment. The woman produces a crumpled piece of paper from her sleeve and takes notes. Who is this? We have a voiced person with a portrait out in the wild. I smell a new companion. Potentially. Or maybe a... Some sort of merchant that we're going to pick up and bring back to Defender's Heart. I don't know. An audience. Problematic, but not critical. You there, boy. Stay out of this. It is counterproductive to stand in the way of scientific progress. The woman turns to you, and for a moment she focuses her, focuses her wandering, distracted gaze on your face. Uh, who are you? What are you doing here? Huh? Please tell me you're going to take them all out. Who's that? I don't know her. Greetings, boys and girls. I am your sister in sin. A devotee of Lord Baphomet's dark will, and so on and so forth. Uh-oh. She looks like one of us, but she talks kind of weird. <laughs> Who's there with you? The cultist's finger points your way. Who? Oh, them. Just an audience. They don't matter. Consider them a supplementary component of the coming experiment. Ah. Shrug. <laughs> In the name of our Lord Baphomet, please be so kind as to undertake a little test of your competency in our wicked cause. It seems the cultist wishes to say something, but the woman won't let him. Let's start with something simple. So here's my first question. What is Lord Baphomet's favorite weapon? She produces a pencil and a crumpled piece of paper from her, from her sleeve. We will not answer to you. Our lord can wield any kind of weapon. He is all-powerful. Wrong. He wields no weapons at all. He doesn't need any. He just gores his enemies with his horns. Actually, it's Isergal, a glaive made of red adamantine. Adamantine. That is correct. But still, boy, no prompting, please. The woman turns to you with a glimmer of interest in her eyes. This experiment has taken quite a surprising turn. I would never have expected the followers of the Great Baphomet to be baffled by such a simple question. The woman frowns. Fine. Let's recalibrate the difficulty and proceed with the next question. Please name Lord Baphomet's sacred animal. A bull! Of course everybody knows that. Yep. And a cow. Uh, it's an auroch, as a matter of fact. I'd like to ask you to stop prompting them, but it seems they could do with a prompt or two. The woman throws a vague glance at you. It appears the experiment has yielded results which are as unexpected as they are incredible. Baphomet's cultists have not the slightest idea about who Baphomet really is, let alone any in-depth knowledge of his ideology or philosophy. I'm positive that this news will cause a sensation in widest scientific circles. Damn it! She's right. I'm a <laughs> shitty excuse for a cultist. And my mother used to tell me to become a plowman. Hey, take it easy! We've only had two questions. You there. Come on. Ask another one. We'll get the next one. <laughs> this is hilarious. Ask them more. They might still manage it. Is there any sense in continuing? You cannot answer the simplest of questions. I am ashamed of all of you. 
as cultists and as individuals. Please, ask again. I can answer. I'm sure I can. <sighs> How do you spell Baphomet's name? <laughs> B -A oh, no. I thought it was gonna be fun, but instead there are all these questions. <laughs> I'm done here. I'm going back to my home village, back to my mother. Hey, wait! You there! How dare you stir up discord in our ranks? Grab her and tie her up, and her entire entourage too. The experiment is complete. The woman takes it, makes a note. Unable to deal with the questions, the cultists decide to deal with the examiner instead. A typical reaction for a person who has never been burdened with any intelligence. She raises her eyes. We're gonna start hitting each other, aren't you? Please proceed. I won't interrupt. Save the uh, no, I, I would like you to interrupt. I'm, I'm, I'm low on people. Oh, this is not good. This is not good at all. And by not good, I mean very, very, very bad. Okay, well, Jeff, uh, we're definitely gonna need the help of potentially a nice water elemental. Let's go ahead and summon that. Mrs. Barrett. Now it's Barrett's turn. Barrett, you're gonna go ahead and use this. And you're going to step up to this guy. Get right in his face. Lan, I need you to take some steps backward. And you're going to go after the archer. Good damage. Camellia. It's time to use our spells here to get out of this. You just hold person on the cultist. Damn it, he saved. Good job, Baron. And Wolgif we'll might as well put Mage Armor on too. Awesome. Alright, water elemental, go. Okay, not so great. But that's all right. I forgive you. All right, they missed Barrett again. Barrett's gonna attack now. Good damage, critical hit for 14 damage. That's what we like to see. Uh, hit the archer, come on. Good. He's almost gone. You're out of spells. I don't wanna get in melee range of Camellia yet. So instead we're going to the Divine Zap. All right, it looks like Barrett does have an aggro of all these guys. So Camellia and Wolgif can get in range without hopefully dying. All right, Wolgif. You're gonna get up behind this guy. Stab you you. Why not 20 damage with the sneak attack, fantastic. Barrett with another critical hit. That's two in a row. Barrett's on fire. He's making up for his his failure in the last fight. Lan, kill this archer. Come on, man. Lan, you're letting me down. After the last fight, I had so much faith in you. Yeah, they, they just can't hit him. They have a five percent chance to hit him. Distract them for me. Come on, Wolgif. Damn it. Ooh, very nice. Do not hold back. He's down. Go ahead. Move up into his face. There we go. All right, Lan. Endure this. There we go. Archer's down. Camellia, go up here and stab him. Good. Five damage.
All right, summon demon is gone. But that's okay. There's only the sharpshooter left. And Barret's about to charge him. Charge him down, Barret. What? Never mind. Just slowly walk over there. How, how disappointing. Get behind him. There we go. A little bit further. Perfect. All right, land. Eight damage. Ten damage. Good damage. Uh, Camellia, go up there and zap him. Beautiful. All right, that went well. And who are you? The absence of an answer is an answer, too. Interesting. There wasn't a question. Unless he saw a question we didn't see. The result is statistically predictable, especially considering their intelligence level. Alright, so it looks like Mage Armor actually didn't help him. I'm guessing that's what this is explaining. Okay. The woman examines the cultist's remains. What about you, boy? Are you ready to answer some questions for the good of science? Let's proceed with the experiment. My first question is simple. Which colors does the goddess Iomade prefer? The woman turns over the crumpled piece of paper to the blank side. Succeed at a large religion check. You're absolutely convinced that the correct answer is red and white. Uh, red and white. This answer is correct. It is comforting to meet at least one educated person in the melting pot of ignorance that is Canabra's today. The woman makes a note on the piece of paper. Let's proceed. Did Era didn't take part in any crusade before he died? You know for sure that Eridan died not long before the world wound opened and the first crusade began. Wait. Um. So we know that's not the case, right? Because we've personally read that uh, that he took put, took part in the first crusade, right? think I think that's what we read and if we read it I'm going to ignore the check and say he did Aridin's death dates to 4606 and that is precisely the year when the world moon was opened the oh I was right started back in 4622. I I psyched myself out well <sighs> I suppose I should terminate the experiment due to the subject's utterly woeful performance but don't get upset. We all can't be smart. Someone has to be strong. I liked how you defeated those cultists. Yeah, I'll be the bronze. <laughs> it seems to me that I owe you an explanation. My name is Nenio. Nenio. I'm an explorer, a pilgrim, a yet-to-be-recognized scientific luminary, future author of the great encyclopedia Galarionica, and rector of all Absalom's universities at once. Future rector, I should say. I also know several spells. The woman blinks several times. Why do you keep calling me boy? No, Canabras isn't safe right now. Now, can you finally tell me what you were getting at with all those questions? It is so heartening to see you strive for knowledge. I have been conducting an experiment comparing the intellectual abilities of the average cultist with those of the average crusader. Well, I got one answer right and I got no answers right, so we're smarter. Unfortunately, the experiment has proven that the opposing parties possess approximately equal faculties. Wait, no, it doesn't. A shame, indeed, for I have always claimed that despite the popular beliefs about the limited intellectual abilities of those in the army, at least some of them can be considered educated. It appears I was mistaken. So you're trying to say that I am mediocre? Don't you dare call me stupid. Yes. <laughs> Ninio scans you once again from head to toe. Fantastic. Um, why do you keep calling me boy? I have a name. I apologize for an injury to your ego, but your name is irrelevant on the grand scale of the universe. Thus, it cannot possibly interest me. I will forget it as soon as I hear it. To avoid unnecessary confusion, I prefer to not know it at all. Okay. Canabras isn't safe right now. Shall we join forces? Do you wish to become my follower? To accompany me on my expeditions to the world wound? To assist me in my experiments? To run errands for me? Perhaps even to write down my deepest thoughts for the benefit of future generations? Oh, how splendid! Of course, I agree. 
Truth be told, I have no money to pay you. But you will be aiding the progress of science, and that is its own reward. If we join for forces, you'll have to follow my instructions during our expeditions. Huh? What? N oh, yes. The dangers and these battles. Of course, I will follow your orders. I place my life in your capable hands, so I can focus on the things that really matter. Ninio focuses her wandering eyes on you. I agree. Excellent. You're hired. To think that I finally found someone to accompany me. 27 Crusaders before you said no. Not one of them saw the undeniable appeal of my offer. Your first assignment is to take me to a safe place. I have to admit that today's experiment has left me quite tired. Um. Well. I'm going to keep the party as it is right now. But we might, or we might take her with us when we leave the Defender's Heart. Just right now, I don't want to... I guess it wouldn't mess anything up if I got rid of one of the people that weren't dead. I don't know who I'm going to replace with her, because I do like her a lot. She was really fun. Oh man, now we have choices to make. Eh. It's always the toughest part. And who is that cultist who was, like, watching from afar? That was a bit strange. Ninio. I like her getup, too. Travel. No more random encounters. Really? Come on. I just want to get to the inn and rest and save my friends. And it's battle. Of course it's battle. Against... Gotta save the messenger, I suppose. Um, drink a healing... No, we're about to be saved. Just... I don't know. Walk up and acid splash the sheep. Whatever that thing is. Alright, he is a heavily reduced or has acid reduction resistance. It's not good. You hang in there, messenger. You're probably gonna die. With everything that's attacking you. And all the attacks they're getting on you. God damn it. Sinking cloud creates a blank of fog, a bank of fog, like that created by a fog cloud, except that the vapors are nauseating, leaving creatures in the cloud become in the cloud. Living creatures in the cloud become nauseated. This condition lasts as long as the creature is in the cloud and for 1d4 plus rounds after it. Okay. Move out of the cloud. And I guess you can't attack anybody? Doesn't tell me what nauseated does. Okay. I didn't know the dredge could do that. It's the first time they've done that to me. Another stinking cloud? Give me a break. Alright, he's going after Barrett. That's good, I suppose. It's not looking good for the messenger, though. Look, he's actually doing a lot better than I thought he'd be doing. Get out of that cloud. It stinks. Where's the music here? It's oddly quiet. So we can't attack while nauseated? Alright, move around this big guy and try and get... At least you'll be flanking with the messenger, maybe.
Good job, messenger. Alright, you're still thinking, right? Yeah. Hang in there, buddy. We'll be ready in eight or two more rounds. I don't think he's gonna make another two rounds. Yeah, we can't do anything. Man, nauseated is rough. Holy crap. Yep, we knew that was going to happen. Sorry, buddy. Maybe if we had all our people, but even if we did, they all would have gotten hit by that stinking cloud, which just made it so we can't do anything for several rounds. There's probably a way to cleanse it, uh, but we don't have it. At least that I know of. Why can't I attack? Am I still just... I don't get it. Have I been able to attack this whole time and it's just not showing me on the... I bet that's the case. That's really unfortunate. He hit me. You're not allowed to hit me. Cover me, alright? Tactical retreat! No? No. You need to man up and kill that person. And by person, I mean demon. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Okay. So we weren't, we're not able to cast spells. Yeah, I don't think maybe we weren't able to attack. And I'm just... Attack. Wrong. Zap you or zap you? Why not both? Distract them from me. Okay, let's see if you can dodge and get out of there. He could. Good. Alright, Baron. Show them who's the best tank in the game. Lan, go after this, this guy. And... I think you are cured now. We shall overcome. Wolgif, you still can't use these? I don't understand. We're not like fatigued or anything, this is corruption. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they just need more time to rest. Yeah, now they can, okay. Are these guys immune to electricity? Or is it ghouls that were immune to electricity? They're immune to electricity. Okay. Good miss. Good miss, Wolgif. I think I know who I'm going to replace. I mean, I like Wolgif's sneak attack. It has come in handy, but... And I remember being really strong in Pathfinder Kingmaker, so it's probably pretty strong in this game, too. If I was able to utilize it a little better. But, um... I don't know. I really like that... That, uh... Professor. Kind of character. She seems cool. Good job, Barrett. Two more left. Alright, well, if you get in there and use your dagger. Oh, it attacked land, too? That's, that's cheating. Good. He's almost dead. Come on, Baron. 
All right, Wolf. If it's your job to finish him off. Cover me, all right? Good. You won't survive me. We shall overcome. There we go. Do not hold back. Oop. Get rid of that. And this guy had a masterwork. What weapon is that? It's a big axe. And oh, the messenger's alive. How'd that happen? The young soldier wipes the blood spatter from his face with a shaking hand. By Iomade, I'm I'm alive. <sighs> it felt like I had half the abyss and Arilu Arilu herself on my tail back there. Well, that bird just flew right in front of the camera. The soldier sucks in a breath and releases it, clenching his fist to conquer the tremors. Commander Terab Terabade, Terabade, Terabade sent me to get you, and thank all the good, the good gods I found you before it's too late. The commander wants you to come back and help protect the defender's heart right away. Really? Um, what happened? Demons. The demons are closing in on the tavern. They'll soon have us surrounded. I almost didn't make it past them to come get you. They could strike at any moment. They're closing in on the tavern, but noticeably enough that you had time to run for help? I see our enemies used up whatever reserves of stealth they had in their final, their first assault on Canabras. What we need, what we need is there. What need is there for stealth in a city one has already conquered? That's what they think. And that's what will bring and that's what will bring them down. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Yes. Yes, let's go. We'll show those beasts. The crusader tries to summon up his courage, but his face is paler than a sheet and his hands are shaking again. Please let us rest before they attack. <laughs> we'll be in deep trouble if we can't. And I mean deep trouble. Like the deepest of troubles. Okay, doesn't look like we're being attacked. So that's good. Uh, peasant survivors. Survivors. We're looking for a priest. We need a priest. Uh, there's a merchant over here. Or a blacksmith. Yeah, Jorn Vaughn. Hey, buddy. We do need to sell to you. I just remembered we took off uh, What's-Her-Face's armor, didn't we? Yeah, that's what this is. And I never put it back on. I'm dumb. I am dumb. Okay, that's fine. I do want to just sell Masterwork, too. We'll start with that. Deal. What does that leave us with? Okay. That'll be good enough for now. I'm assuming you're not the person I need to talk to for healing. Did we ever find a priest? That goes to the basement where we found Wolgif. Hey guys. Everybody doing alright? What goes up here? Is that just a... Uh... Yeah, it looks like it's just a... A place you can fire down from. Alright. Priests. Was there anybody who was a priest? There's Lan. And Dara was a researcher. Alright, everybody up here is ready to go, it looks like. Sila's not here. Probably because she's dead. So that makes sense. There's Ninio. Wolgif. This person wasn't a priest, what were they? No. Neither was this person. Hold on. 
Yeah, we'll talk to you in a second. Because we let Kalesa go. Because I kind of forgot who she was until just that moment. <laughs> go to our personal chest here. And we want to throw in the magic weapons. In case we ever find somebody who might use them. So the half plate is for Sila. I didn't check to see if anybody could use that, so we're going to hold on to it. And I don't think we want to put anything else in there. Oh, we need to learn that, though. Copy recipe. There we go. Okay, where is the priest at? There has to be a priest somewhere. Uh, we're, we're all good. Do you potentially have scrolls or something of resurrection? No. I was looking in the right place. Yeah, scrolls and potions are in the same spot. Wait, this person was a priest. That's right. Whenever I sleep outside the wall... Hold up, before we do that. Show me the scrolls you're selling. Alright, where is scroll of raised dead? Is that what we're looking for? A raised creature has a number of hit points equal to the, its current HD. Raised dead also removes the death door condition. The subject of the spell gains two permanent neg negative levels when it is raised, just as if it had been hit by an energy draining creature. Though it cannot gain a number of negative uh, a creature who's permanent. So how do we get rid of... See, that's so... It seems like it's so, uh, detrimental. Doesn't it? Is that the only one we have? And we don't even have the money to buy that. I think we're gonna have to let one of them die. Because I'm not going to reload. Or at least die for now. Until we get the money. I imagine if there's a better one, it'll just be even harder. Or more expensive, rather. Because we only have one uh, scale. I think we're gonna have to let Ember stay dead for a while. Because I think we need Sila more than we need Ember, especially with the uh, the new companion, who I'm guessing is a spellcaster, since she said she had spells. That's a shame, I really like Ember. We didn't really even get to talk to her. Hmm. Would you like these? Sell all these. That'll give us some extra money. How much does this cost? 291. Wouldn't be enough to get us 6,000. We're getting closer to the 6,000, so hopefully we won't do without her for very long. But she'll be taking negative levels, which means we probably won't be taking her with us. Man, that's a rough decision, huh? Okay. I was hoping I could just pay him the resurrector or something. Hmm. First is Sus Scrolls. Uh, second, while you're in here in the tavern, I can read one for you. Guaranteed, no surprises. Um, okay. Before I leave, whenever I sleep outside the walls of the Defender's Heart, I'm plagued by terrible dreams. Can you help me? The priest studies your face carefully. You look tired, but otherwise entirely healthy. If we were anywhere else, I would simply tell you to get some rest, but we are not but we are on the borders of the world wound, and I am all too aware of what's happening to you. As you know, the wound is a rift between Galarian and the Abyss, and all the evil that feeds on the Abyss does the opposite in our world. 
it feeds on Galarian. So it is that even when we cannot see demons near us, our ultimate foe, the Abyss, is always surrounding us. Many soldiers fighting in the world wound experience similar things. They suffer terrible nightmares, get no peace, and sometimes even lose their minds. But we are trained to help you with the affli this affliction. By the will of, of Abadar, I have consecrated an altar here. The God's grace permeates the space around it, soothing, soothing one's soul and quieting thoughts during rest. So, if you find your nerve, your nerves are, are fraying, seek out a holy place like this, approach it, and all the corruption will be cleansed from you. Tell me again. Seeing if it says anything. No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay. I wonder if we can leave. Probably not the best idea to leave if there's an imminent demon attack, huh? Which means we're going to have to do it without Sila and Ember. More than likely. Do I have to use this altar or is it resting? Alright, it's resting. Okay, let's see if we can't get, you know, a couple hours of rest before the attack. And, uh, actually, it seems like a, a good spot to end this episode. Uh, it's been a, it's been a rough episode. We've got two permanent deaths out there. Uh, I decided not to use the scale because I thought I could resurrect them using a priest, but that costs 6,000 gold, which we don't have, and it also gives two permanent levels, which is pretty bad. Uh, this doesn't give that, right? Real quick. Uh, it says that this one does too, but we didn't get any permanent level loss. So I wonder if there's like a chance that that doesn't happen. We'll find out once we get 6,000. Uh, so we came back here only to find that the demons are attacking this place soon. So we can't actually leave to go revive them yet, I'm imagining. I don't even know if I can rest. But um, yeah, we're going to try and get some shut eye and before the attack. And then we'll have to manage with five companions. We did pick up Ninio, who we haven't talked to yet. But uh, so hopefully that will be very helpful. And she'll be able to carry us in the battle to come. But yeah, we'll have a decision to make who we revive first between Sila and Ember. I'm guessing we'll probably pick Sila just because Ninio will probably fulfill the same role that Ember fulfills. Uh, but we'll see. But until then, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and that you're having a wonderful day. I'll catch you later.